see the pictures. Cheryl, go ahead. Okay. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jack Daly, the John and Adrian Mars Director of the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the Hubble Space Telescope 25th Anniversary Reception and Award Ceremony. 25 years ago today, the single most influential scientific instrument in history launched aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery. It has forever opened our eyes to the universe. A quarter century later, it remains one of the high water marks of human achievement. The Hubble Space Telescope have revolutionized our understanding of the cosmos. From its perch 350 miles above us, it has seen the birth and death of stars, the transit of alien worlds past distant suns, and the very pillars of creation. Hubble peered back in time and helped us understand our accelerating universe. The telescope's achievements belong to the outstanding men and women who made the program a reality. Many of you are here tonight. The picture belongs to the world. Our master of ceremonies for tonight has been the public's eyes and ears of the space program for more than 20 years. He's a third generation pilot, a veteran journalist, and longtime friend and advocate of this museum. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Miles O'Brien. Miles. Thank you, General. Good to see you. It's a pleasure. It's nice to be uh, introduced by a decorated Marine General. I get to introduce one in a moment, which I believe makes me a civilian sandwich <laughs> on leather, right? Uh, this is my favorite place in Washington, and it's nice to have a night at the museum. If only the Hubble could talk during the night at the museum. Happy birthday, Hubble. 25 years. You know, by my uh, history major math, which includes using my, using my fingers, and I'm a little diminished on that front these days, by my history major math, Hubble was conceived 69 years ago, uh, 44 years of gestation, and it was a roller coaster ride to orbit, and then even after it arrived in orbit. But let's take a moment to remember the widely acclaimed father of Hubble, Lyman Spitzer. Let's give him a round of applause in posthumously. The late Lyman Spitzer. I had the good fortune to meet him on a story back in 1993. He was such a, a, a dear man, and he literally advocated for 30 plus years to make Hubble happen. It's an extraordinary feat and, and a great testament to his perseverance. Uh, in that same year, in 1993, I was at the Space Telescope Science Institute, and I was shooting a story for CNN in preparation for the first Hubble repair mission. And this uh, odd fellow kind of called me over to a computer, and he said, you know, take a look at this. And what I looked at was something called the World Wide Web and Mosaic, which was brand new. And the first thing I saw on Mosaic, on the World Wide Web, was a Hubble image. The second thing I saw was a cat video, and that blew my mind. After that, I thanked Al Gore for showing me his invention, and I went on my business. And had I only invested at that point, I wouldn't be standing here tonight. But hey, it's a living. Uh, I want to show you three of my favorite images from Hubble real quickly, if I could. Let's put them up here, if we can. Uh, I'm kind of old school when it comes to Hubble images that I like. Uh, number one, I, I, who could forget Shoemaker Levy 9, the newly clear seeing Hubble 1994. Talk about scientific serendipity. And that, I believe, is uh, another kind of G spot right there. That was the, um, the G impact, which many hundreds of times the, the nuclear arsenal of the world where it exploded at once. Spectacular image, spectacular story, really captured the world's imagination. Next image, speaking of capturing the world's imagination, is of course, it's iconic and, and I, it's kind of predictable, but I, you can't help but do that, the pillars of creation. This is scientifically fascinating, of course. We're looking at, you know, basically a nursery for stars, where they're born. But think of how this image galvanized public interest in the, in the Hubble Space Telescope. You do not have, you can be a history major and appreciate that, that image. And then finally, 
the one that has always blown my mind is, and there were subsequent ones which got better, but the, the first deep field image. When you think that that image is 1 24 millionth of the sky, presumably dark, on a long time exposure, and voila, 3,000 galaxies, give or take. And so, I, again, I can't do the math, but if there are 3,000 galaxies in 1 24 millionth of the sky we couldn't see otherwise, how can we possibly be alone in this universe? What, what is, I mean, really, the, the fact that, that textbooks have been rewritten is extraordinary. We, I, you know, it's easy to take this all for granted, but there were many things we didn't even know, we guessed about astronomy, but which have been uh, confirmed by Hubble over the years. Quasars, uh, black holes, constants, expansions, you name it, uh, methane on moons, it goes on and on and on. It's extraordinary. Our first speaker uh, was a science advisor uh, to the Clinton administration, went on to AAAS, has had a great career in science and in public policy. Uh, you know, I often say to people, I'm not a scientist, but I play one on TV. President Obama said he's not a scientist either, but he said he's got this guy, John Holdren. He's a scientist. Ladies and gentlemen, we got this guy right here. Please welcome the President's science czar, John Holdren. Well, good evening, everybody. It is a huge pleasure for me to be here to help celebrate this extraordinary milestone, this extraordinary anniversary. I think everybody in this room knows that Hubble images are powerful not just for the scientific insights they reveal, but in their capacity to inspire everybody about the universe and our place in the universe Anybody who gazes on the spectacular Hubble Deep Field or the magnificent pillars of creation, which Miles just shared with us again, whether it's a scientist or a student or a citizen, anybody who looks at these images is left with a sense of wonder and a sense of awe at the universe in which we find ourselves. And the President of the United States, whom I have the privilege to serve as his science advisor, is certainly no exception. Today, I shared with him the stunning 25th anniversary photograph that NASA has distributed in honor of this extraordinary event, and the president was inspired. In fact, he was so inspired that he said, how could you possibly go to this event representing the White House and not read a letter from me on the occasion? And so I would like to read you a letter from President Obama. It says the following. To the men and women of NASA, I just wanted to congratulate you on this extraordinary feat. 25 years ago today, the Hubble Space Telescope was launched into orbit to explore our solar system and plumb the deepest recesses of our universe. In our wildest dreams, we couldn't have predicted that it would produce more than a million observations that would expand and deed transform our knowledge of the universe. We couldn't have known that it would open our eyes to the unimaginable beauty of the cosmos. It's thanks to your own administrator, Charlie Bolden, who was the pilot of the shuttle mission that made all of this possible. Charlie flew four shuttle missions in total, two as pilot and two as commander, including the historic first joint space shuttle mission with Russian cosmonauts. And as your fearless leader, he has taken NASA into the next frontier of exploration, from launching a spacecraft to Jupiter to landing a rover called Curiosity on Mars. It's thanks to Dr. John Grunsfeld. John is your associate administrator for science, but he's also known as the Hubble repairman. He's done eight spacewalks, totaling 58 hours and 30 minutes, over the course of three shuttle missions to upgrade and repair the Hubble. I think he's earned some overtime. And it's thanks to all of you, men and women who have poured your heart and souls into America's space program, propelled by sheer nerve, talent, and a limitless sense of possibility, 
that America will continue to push the boundaries of humanity's reach. Today, as we celebrate 25 years of discovery, let's set our sights even higher and inspire the next generation of astronauts, scientists, and engineers, young dreamers everywhere who are looking up to the heavens tonight to boldly seek the next frontier. Thank you for all you do, Barack Obama. Let me, let me echo the thanks of President Obama to all of you in NASA, present and past, who have contributed so much to the nation's space program. In the 25 years that the Hubble Space Telescope has been in orbit, it has transformed our understanding of the universe and our place in it. Because of Hubble, we have seen deeper into the universe than ever before. We've seen the birth of stars and galaxies, including those that are now billions of years old themselves. And we've seen the spectacular deaths of stars that seed the universe with the elements that enable life as we know it. We've gained new insight into our nearest neighbors, the planets and bodies of our own solar system. As we celebrate this monumental testament to the curiosity and ambition of the American people and all of humanity, we are reminded of how much more we can learn and how much farther we can go. America is a country that has always embraced the promise and the potential of science and technology. And we have always pushed the envelope across the science, technology, engineering, and math domains. Hubble has played a unique role in our American culture, giving us a window into our universe that is accessible to everyone from the front pages of our newspapers and magazines to classrooms across the country. The stunning images and discoveries from this observatory have touched generations of students, girls and boys, young and old. There are countless scientists and engineers across the country who, in learning about the universe through the eyes of the Hubble, were inspired to pursue their own careers in the STEM fields. That inspiration will undoubtedly continue with each new orbit of the telescope, one of America's greatest scientific and technological achievements. But the story does not end here. As the Hubble itself continues, only a few years from now, it will be joined by NASA's most ambitious telescope yet, the James Webb Space Telescope. Once operational, the James Webb will build on Hubble's foundation to observe the most distant reaches of the cosmos, answering questions about the first stars and galaxies in our universe, as well as questions we have not yet even learned to ask. We hope that a few decades from now, our successors will celebrate the James Webb Telescope's tremendous discoveries the way we celebrate Hubble's achievements tonight. Congratulations once again. Here's to the Hubble. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John Holdren. 25 years ago, as John mentioned, the man sitting in the right seat of the shuttle was well into an epic career on and off the planet. A Naval Academy graduate in 1968, president of his class. I got to say, the Naval Academy graduates are the best. What would we do without them in the astronaut corps, right? I've got a son who's about to uh, toss his hat high on May 22nd, so I'm going to put in a plug for those who serve there. But he's, he's ready to move on, that's for sure. That's, that's a hard four years. It really is. Um, our astronaut corps is, is lucky to have had someone of Charlie's caliber. Uh, even before he got there, 100 sorties over Vietnam and Cambodia. Uh, by the time he got to the um, Hubble deployment mission, he was, he was a very accomplished um, young man. And since 2009, he's been flying a desk in the corner office, ninth floor at NASA headquarters. Uh, probably not as much fun as deploying the Hubble, I got to say, right? Please welcome a true hero, a great American, Charlie Bolden.
Thank you so much, Miles. Um, you know, for me, it's an honor to be here tonight among all of you. Many of you, um, many of you here represent the thousands of people who played a critical role in the success of the Hubble Space Telescope over the past 25 years. Through your efforts, and, and I mean that, through the efforts of many of you sitting in this room, um, we have just, astronomers have used Hubble to revolutionize our understanding of the universe. My job is to present awards tonight, but before I get to that, uh, I do want to thank you again, uh, Dr. John Holdren, for, for coming in, out to be with us tonight. Um, for those of you who don't know John, he has been a great friend of NASA science, and it's always wonderful to have him and his lovely wife, Dr. Holdren, uh, who is also with us uh, for this important event this evening. It's always great to be at the National Air and Space Museum, so I echo what uh, what, what Miles said earlier about it, it's just a phenomenal place to be. When we come here, we're where you can see firsthand what humans can achieve through aviation and in space. Hubble is one of those great missions that straddles the line between human exploration of space and scientific discovery and pushes the envelope on both. Hubble belongs to the entire world. It truly is the people's telescope. And all of you have truly been a part of a milestone for humanity. You've expanded our reach, and by the amazing transformative discoveries of this great observatory, you've opened our eyes to our place in the universe and helped unify the globe in a higher spirit of pursuit. It's hard to believe that 25 years ago today, I was in the pilot seat for STS-31. Now, all of you who, um, who know shuttle and all that stuff, I have to, I have to you know, I, I got a lot of credit tonight I don't deserve. Uh, the pilot, Ray J, where are you? Okay. Ray J and I were pilots on our Hubble missions, and that meant we were helpers. Uh, we were the co-pilot. It was the commander, Lauren Shriver, and Lauren Shriver is somewhere in this house tonight. Lauren, where are you? Uh, Lauren is right back there. So Lauren was the guy at the controls. Um, on that particular day, in fact, that particular mission in Discovery when we deployed Hubble. You can see Discovery herself at our sister museum to this one, the Hudvar-Hazy Center out at Dulles Airport. You know, I know, um, I'll never forget watching the telescope float out into space after a, a very difficult deploy day that involved challenges to getting the observatory out of the cargo bay and also a bulky solar array on that deploy day. But after following it for a while, once it was free, eventually our crew and I left Hubble to space for future astronauts to complete its full amplification as a scientific legend. And for those of you who had the privilege of, of watching the, the Hubble IMAX 3D tonight, it gave you a slight idea of all that Hubble has been through over the last 25 years, in fact, more than 25 years, but over the last 25 years on orbit, to be perhaps the greatest observatory that humans have ever, have ever known. I salute all my fellow astronauts who are here tonight and other places for their bravery and their commitment to deploying and servicing Hubble. They developed new tools and ways of doing work on orbit. They pioneered the repair of a satellite in space something that I think will be a lasting legacy in, the, in addition to Hubble's science as we move forward to an ever greater human presence in low Earth orbit. John Grunsfeld, who is, uh, was a, a key figure in bringing us all together for this occasion, for this incredible week of activity, to be quite honest. Uh, John, you certainly have a, the record for house calls with Hubble. And I thank you for all and all the servicing mission crews for the sacrifices you made and the hard work you poured into this asset for the entire world. Thanks to all of you, we have a strong chance that there will be a continuous, continuous data coming back from a great observatory, as Dr. Holdren said, as we prepare to launch the James Webb Space Telescope in just a few short years. Thank you also to the Space Telescope Science Institute for its unflagging enthusiasm and cheerleading of Hubble, in addition to its astute management of this complex project for so many years. I also want to give a very special recognition to our colleague and my personal friend, the Dean of Heads of Space Agencies, as I like to call him, 
Jean-Jacques Dordain. Jean-Jacques' service to the space community is legendary, and I look forward to seeing what he will do next after he leaves ESA this summer. ESA's contributions to Hubble have been critical, and I thank Jean-Jacques for his leadership and continued dedication, not only to our legacy missions, but also to pushing the frontier toward the future of exploration. I'll let you in on a little secret. Jean-Jacques and I are conspiring. Uh, we're both trying to get to 77 years of age because what's magic about 77? Uh, that's the age that John Glenn said we can't think about going back into space again. So we're working to get there so we can, uh, we can go fly together again and be partners. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Jackie? <laughs> the accomplishments and performance of the incredible international Hubble Space Telescope team is deserving of a special recognition because of its long-term iconic impact on science and humanity. Since we at NASA currently have no established award to recognize a lifetime of achievement on part of a group or a team, we have created a unique certificate of recognition just for this occasion of the 25th anniversary of the Hubble Space Telescope. Each certificate that we hand out tonight reads, from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, presents this Hubble 25th anniversary commendation to the specific team for contributions that rival the best that NASA has achieved in innovation and overcoming challenges. Signed and sealed in Washington, D.C. this 24th day of April in 2015, me. <laughs> it doesn't say me. Now, Miles, if you would uh, come back and take your podium and resume your duties as the MC, I'll step down for a few minutes, and then later I'm going to ask Mike Garcia to, uh, to assist me by introducing each team as I stand down on the floor and present them with, uh, with the awards of recognition that we have tonight. And Mike's going to read you a brief description of each team and the unique roles they played in the life of Hubble to date. So, Miles, thank you very much. Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. As um, NASA didn't build uh, Hubble alone, like so many great space missions, perhaps most notably the International Space Station, it is the result of a partnership with the European Space Agency. Now, our next guest has been with ESA for 30 years. Since Hubble was still on terra firma, uh, when he started, there were 11 members, now there are 22. He obviously has a very magnetic personality, clearly. Uh, he's forged partnerships with other countries, including China. That's a good idea. And um, he wanted to be an astronaut, as I understand it, but instead has served his agency and, frankly, all of us who care deeply about space uh, with uh, great vigor and great success, and particularly for the past 12 years, as the general director of ESA. He is leaving his post in June, so give him a special warm welcome tonight, uh, acknowledging him for his great service. Ladies and gentlemen, Jean-Jacques Dordain. Dordain. Thank you very much. Uh, it's certainly a pleasure for ESA and, uh, and for me to to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Hubble Space Telescope together with a family. It's a large and uh, old family which has made the success of, uh, of the Hubble Space Telescope. So HST, it's uh, three letters that uh, I shall translate into uh, five words. Cooperation, risk, success, people, and future. Cooperation first. So the Hubble Space Telescope is a long-standing cooperation between NASA and ESA, which has started 45 years ago, in 1970, when NASA invited ESRO. ESA was not even existing at that time. It was ESRO, the predecessor of ESA, to join a mission to look at the universe. And as I am repeating at each opportunity, and uh, Charlie knows that. Cooperation is a, a slow process, but 
is robust and sustainable. And the proof is that uh, we have signed the Memorandum of Understanding in 1977, and the paper still exists, has been renewed several times uh, to uh, drive this cooperation. And ISA has provided uh, to uh, the Hubble some hardware, and one instrument, and uh, solar panels, but also scientists, and there, is, uh, there are 15 ESA scientists working at the Space Telescope Science Institute, and also astronauts. And I have seen them since uh, Claude and uh, Jean-Francois have flown uh, on servicing missions uh, to the Hubble. Second word is risks. Yes, it was risky for NASA to decide to make such a huge uh, piece to look at the universe. It was a risk. It was also a risk for NASA to ask ESA 45 years ago to join this uh, program. Because ESA at that time, there was almost no achievement at that time. So uh, ESA was a baby agency. You took the risk to put ESA on board. And it was risky also to uh, send astronauts to uh, service the uh, telescope, refurbishing the telescope, extending its uh, life, and even improving the telescope. But risk belongs to progress. You cannot push the frontiers of knowledge without taking risks. I know that it's difficult, but it's necessary. The third word is success. I would not say that uh, the Hubble is a success. It's uh, a series of successes, uh, uh, successive successes, because uh, at each discovery, you have new questions. And each time you have new questions, you have new discoveries. And this is a cooperation between uh, different scientific communities and also the cooperation among generations. Because the 45 years ago, the scientists of today were not even born. So it was a cooperation among generations which have put the leverage for new success. The first word is people. Because cooperation, risk management, and discoveries is a matter of people. People who are taking political decisions, people who are taking technical decisions, NASA, industry, uh, people from the scientific communities, and also astronauts, working together with one single objective, progress. And I would say, and this was been uh, said, that uh, among the people, there is also all the public and the young generations who are all fascinated by the pictures that you have seen tonight. It's important to involve the people, because only the people can change the world and invent a better future. And I shall finish by that. This is the future. The future is always more interesting than the past, but the past just serves to make the future better. So, that more data will come from the Hubble Space Telescope, but uh, even when the data will be over, the work will continue because the scientists will use this data for decades. So the mission will not be over with the hardware. Uh, and after that, there, was the James, there will be the James Webb Telescope, and uh, the cooperation between ESA and NASA will continue on the James Webb. We are ready, and uh, we shall be there again as we have been together on the Hubble Space Telescope. So congratulations, NASA, and uh, happy birthday, Hubble Space Telescope. I understand, I understand this corner of the museum is a very popular corner, and I, I'm hoping it's because of the Hubble and not the fact that right over here is the how do they go to the bathroom in space exhibit, which as any astronaut knows is the first question of any sixth grader 
when they go into the classroom. By the way, I, I know there's, you know, we, we've talked about Charlie and John. Would anybody who has, uh, as an astronaut, flown to Hubble please stand? There are more than one of them, more than two of them here. And please let's give them a round of applause. There they are. I mean, let's face it. Had it not been, you know, that had it not been for their efforts, it would have been the techno-Turkey that they talked about back in 1990. Um, and we do applaud them, but as a former TV anchorman, uh, you, uh, you will understand that I know they really are taking all the credit and that there are many others who make it all happen. It takes a village to make these things happen. So let's spend a few moments listening to some of the people who, through the ups and downs, the wild roller coaster ride that is the Hubble Space Telescope, let's hear from some of the people that made it all happen on video. It means that we now understand much more about our universe than we ever would have known had it not been for Hubble. It just gives me that sense that we live in this vast and remarkable universe. Hubble today would be a piece of floating space debris if it weren't for the human spaceflight program. To build a telescope, in many ways, is a decision to build a time machine. The United States Congress approved a large space telescope in 1977, sparking work to begin on creating this large, complex, and capable orbiting telescope. Well, it wasn't easy. Uh, it, it was a long slog, uh, difficult um, politically at first, to, to have it accepted and funded in the U.S. Congress. And, and then uh, technically it was difficult. It's an amazing machine. It can uh, orbit around the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour. Uh, and the reason it can take all these, these great images is not only because it's above the atmosphere, but because it can very steadily hold its gaze on uh, an object in space. A globally connected telescope built through a partnership with the European Space Agency, which would look into the stars well beyond international borders. It takes a lot of people. Uh, you know, it takes people that, uh, obviously, the scientists to conceive of it. It takes the engineers to design it and build it and test it. It takes technicians to actually build it. It takes the people to keep the rooms clean, the facilities up and operating. So it takes people from every walk of life in, in order to do it, every skill set that you can think of. To then place this telescope into orbit to send back to us the data that scientists needed, unobstructed and unencumbered. And when it was launched in 1990, it really opened a new vista on the whole universe simply by enabling us to get sharper images above the atmosphere. At the time, I was the what we call the PLT, or the pilot, for the Hubble deploy mission, which was STS-31 aboard the shuttle Discovery. All of us in the crew had a, a certain feeling of exhilaration and excitement. We knew that this was going to be an important mission. Two, one, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery with the Hubble Space Telescope, our window on the universe. On the 25th of April, 1990, the Space Shuttle Discovery deployed the Hubble Space Telescope into an orbit around Earth. Discovery Houston, you have a go to open the doors. Uh, Roger, Houston. The mission itself was pretty intense because we, we had to train for any number of contingencies that we all prayed would not happen. Uh, ironically, one of those contingencies was failure of the solar array to deploy. It took us much of the day for the flight control team to say, look, we." This is not working out. We don't think we're going to get the solar rays deployed. Side of the path, the other half. All of a sudden, this great experience turned out to, to just go, this is not good. Ship supervisor. People. When the ground control team calls, it stop, stop. We think we found a solution. Um, you know, just stop where you are. We're going to try this. And, and they did, and it worked. And so we went ahead and deployed. Boy, activity so far is going very smoothly. Okay, they copy the story and we're uh, It all worked out because of the incredible work of the combination of the crew on board, the flight control team in Houston, but most especially um, very smart people at the Goddard Space Flight Center uh, who actually knew the Hubble Space Telescope about as well as any people around. Discovery, go for Hubble release. Houston Discovery. Go ahead, Charlie. Okay, story, uh, we've been taking marks. Um, residuals and ratios look good. 
and we'd like to go ahead and uh, go to filter state. We concur, Charlie. The science that is astronomy would never be the same. When people think about a telescope here on Earth, they think about a mirror with a tube around it, and that's exactly what Hubble is. It's a, it's a huge mirror with a huge tube around it in space. Of course, the purpose of Hubble is to take these beautiful images that we learn about, and then the data is sent back to Earth for us to study. The Hubble Space Telescope powered up, all systems nominal, and the data began to stream in. Images of far off distances, galaxies and stars, but there was something wrong. The Magnificent Space Observatory's imagery was not clear, not crisp. We saw the first light images, and to the amateur, like me, it looked great, because we had made this great discovery right off the bat. What we thought was a single star turned out to be a binary star. When we learned that, no, it's not really that good an image, it's, it's kind of blurred because we have this theme. From an agency perspective and from a public perspective, in a, in a congressional perspective, it was doom and gloom. But working on a bipartisan basis, we used the best tools uh, to identify, was this a techno-turkey that we would just bag uh, as a terrible mistake and say bye-bye boondoggle, or were we really going to try to fix it? All we had was sincere collaboration. The mirror was polished incorrectly. We were off by half the thickness of a human hair from center to edge. And that, that's pretty astounding uh, that, that you know, we could uh, come so close and yet not make it. The truly remarkable feature of the Hubble Space Telescope is that it was designed to be upgraded and fixed. And NASA is absolutely expertise on this. When you got to get the job done, the team comes from many different places. One. And we have liftoff, liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavour on an ambitious mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. The real magic on the Hubble mission is almost 40 hours of spacewalking and we had almost no surprises. Because astronauts from NASA have been able to go back and refurbish it, put in new instruments, repair it. So that 25 years has made it an increasingly more powerful telescope and it's the fact that Hubble is so powerful today which is so remarkable after 25 years. It's basically 10 to 100 times more powerful than when it was first launched. I did a mission to the uh, Hubble Space Telescope, and it, was a, it, wasn't, it wasn't really a refurbishment, it was a rescue mission, because the Hubble Telescope uses um, gyroscopes to determine how it's moving and how to point with absolutely no motion at a star. And those gyroscopes uh, were failing, and then by the time we got there, only one, I think, was working. And so it was a dead telescope at that point. Our role on that mission was to basically repair the Hubble telescope. It was a repair, a real repair mission, just like the first repair mission to change the optics. If I had messed that up, I would be the one that had broken the telescope forever. <laughs> I guess that's part of the excitement of having worked a Hubble mission, because you know you've got the best, best team on the ground, best crew upstairs. It's exciting, but there's, there's a level of confidence you're gonna pull through this. We were able to leave the Hubble in even better shape such that now we're able to celebrate the 25th anniversary. With the repairs completed, Hubble blew the world away with what it saw. Circling the globe at five miles per second, this school bus sized observatory was the most technologically advanced device ever launched and has stayed amazingly advanced through five repair and upgrade missions. From the first mission critical optics repair on space shuttle mission STS-61, to the last servicing mission, STS-125, which added the Wide Field Camera 3 and replaced or improved sensors, batteries, and numerous other components. The magnitude of the things that they wanted to accomplish almost meant certain failure somewhere. But the crew said, look, we can do this. You know, we will have accomplished so much more in making Hubble better than it is ever, ever believed to be. Everybody knows Hubble. It's, it's really true. Worldwide, all throughout the U.S., everybody, all ages, all walks of life, you say Hubble Space Telescope, people know what you're talking about. More than a simple telescope, Hubble is humanity's grand observatory of the vastness of space. And we've kept exploring by staring into the universe and moving forward. The great thing about Hubble now, this year, is that it's still going strong, and we expect it to last out till 2020, maybe even longer. Hubble has consistently taken us to places we've never been, visually, of course, and uh, given uh, and empowered us to answer questions that in a previous generation of telescopes, we couldn't even pose. And that allowed us to probe 
much deeper in the universe and to see phenomena that were otherwise hidden from us. And it revealed a scientific wonderland of discoveries, but even more so, it showed us for the first time how beautiful the universe is because the Hubble Space Telescope was able to observe the cosmos with the kind of intricate detail that we observe with our human eyeballs. It means that we now understand much more about our universe than we ever would have known had it not been for Hubble. Uh, that we have not only young people, students, but now professionals who have grown up with Hubble and who have had Hubble change their lives and change their minds about, about careers because they saw a Hubble image and decided that, you know, I don't really think I like science, but I think I want to try it because I want to go take part in, in doing something with this particular instrument that makes these incredible visual images for people. So I, I think it has changed not just textbooks, but people's lives. We're on a never-ending journey, and the Hubble Space Telescope celebrates its quarter century of exploration as part of that journey. What's really, uh, of course, as you know, the Hubble was built to be serviced on orbit. And there were many pieces that were designed just for that. But uh, as it turns out over the years, uh, a lot of the work that was done was not intended to be done by a, a spacewalking astronaut. Uh, as someone once told me, it's like working on your car in the cold in ski gloves. And I believe that person is our next speaker. But before I bring him up here, I have to do a little humble brag. I was the first reporter who had an opportunity to interview the Hubble repairman on the job site. Well, at least the practice job site. Take a look at this video. Hey, look who we found here. It's the Hubble Hugger himself, John Gladstone. Oh, right. Under plexiglass windows, and over each screw is a hole. And the hole is big enough yeah. leverage to uh, take the cards out. I'm not hurting anything, I hope. Yep. Okay. Okay, so you can practice spinning that a couple of times just to get a feel for the trigger. Get a sense of how valuable this training is. So, you know you got a good job when your rich friends call you up and say, can you get me in that pool in Houston? I say, no, sorry. Sorry, that's just for me and for John Grunsfeld, who's got an even better job. In any case, uh, that was one of my all-time favorite opportunities as a reporter, and uh, an, a truly extraordinary interview. And it wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for John Grunsfeld and the, rem the rest of that crew, the last Hubble repair mission, advocating for me to be there. Uh, John is now um, the science boss at headquarters, uh, which in some ways means the fun is over for him, too. But that's all right. Somebody's got to do that job, too. Please welcome the Hubble repairman, John Grunsfeld. Thank you very much, Miles, for that kind introduction and for joining me in the neutral buoyancy laboratory while we were practicing and training to repair the advanced camera for surveys. Uh, as an NBL diver, uh, we now count you as a member of our Hubble team. Tonight, we celebrate. We celebrate one of the grandest adventures in human history, certainly in the history of our space program. And as you look around, that's quite a feat. For me, working with the Hubble team has been the highlight of my life, without doubt. There's nowhere I'd rather be than in a spacesuit hugging Hubble. The story of Hubble, with all its twists and turns, is almost too fantastic to be true. But it is, and we all lived it. From the launch, to the trouble with the solar array on deployment, to the first servicing mission, where women and men in white suits rode to the rescue like an old Western. To the missions and the politics that followed, the Hubble story is a narrative about the most amazing team in the world. More than a team, we are all a family. Our mission at NASA is to innovate, explore, discover, and inspire. We are searching for answers to fundamental questions where do we come from? Where are we going? Are we alone? Hubble is helping us to answer these questions and much, much more. 
Hubble, and all of our NASA activities are funded by taxpayer investments in NASA. Many of those taxpayers are not as, not as fortunate as we are. We all have a special responsibility to the nation to deliver. Hubble delivers. Hubble delivers the science. Hubble delivers inspiration and motivation to learn science, technology, engineering, and math for millions of students, not only in our nation, but worldwide. Many scientists reach the peak of their productivity in their 20s. I think you would all agree that Hubble is at its peak right now. I want to personally thank all of you who contributed to the Hubble program for doing your job, and not a little more, but a lot more. Those of you who know me know I give homework. My charge for you tonight is twofold. First of all, make sure and thank your loved ones if they're not here for allowing you to do these great things. And second, I ask you to redouble your efforts to share the wonder and awe of Hubble as it continues its voyage of discovery. Now it is my pleasure to bring Administrator Charlie Bolden back to the stage to begin our award ceremony. And to do that, I'd like to present the first award. Charlie, it's a pleasure working with you. And for your role in launching the scientific legacy of the Hubble Space Telescope and your team, we'd like to help you celebrate this special day with one of the new Hubble images. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charlie. Thank you very much. Not very often that I'm surprised, but I'm surprised, John. Thank you very much. OK, uh, on to the awards. Um, the award for, for the science team. This award recognizes the, the spectacular science that the Hubble science team has enabled and carried out. This science rewrote our textbooks, it won a Nobel Prize, and it showed us our place in the universe. Accepting on behalf of the science team is my very good friend, Kathy Flanagan, the interim director of the Space Telescope Science Institute. The award for the servicing mission teams. Without the quick thinking and the hard work of the servicing mission teams, Hubble would not be the scientific legacy it is today. These teams are the embodiment of resilience. Their work ensures that Hubble will continue to, to produce great science into the 2020s and hopefully beyond. Accepting on behalf of those teams is Frank Seppi Seppolino from Goddard Space Flight Center, who pioneered Space Flight Servicing. The award for the European Space Agency. ESA has been an essential partner with us on Hubble, providing the solar panels that power Hubble and the faint optic camera. ESA astronauts helped service the Hubble. That critical partnership continues with Hubble's successor, the James Webb Space Telescope. Accepting on behalf of the ESA team is Jean-Jacques Dordan, the Director General of ESA. Since you have complained a lot about solar panels, uh, Charlie, 
I wish to give you back the original solar panel that you launched. Thank you so very much. That's really good. STS 31, hey. The award to the astronaut team. It's a particular pleasure to see how many of the Hubble astronauts have been able to make it to this 25th anniversary ceremony, including the one standing up here with me. The astronaut retire team embodies the collaboration between manned space flight and science that servicing missions are. Accepting on behalf of the astronaut team is John Grunsfeld, Associate Administrator for Science at NASA, veteran of three Hubble servicing missions, and affectionately known to all of us Hubble huggers here gathered today as the Hubble Repairman. The award for the payload, the mission, and the launch ops team. This award recognizes the work of the teams who prepared the crews for the EVAs, prepared the payloads for the servicing missions, and prepared and operated the shuttle for each launch. Accepting on behalf of that team of 10,000 is Jeffrey Bantle, who was the flight director at Johnson Space Center for three of the six servicing missions. The Award for Development. This award recognizes the start, nearly 45 years ago, of the effort to develop the telescope and its overall science program. Accepting on behalf of those teams is Robert O'Dell, who was the Hubble project scientist at Marshall Space Flight Center, where much of that effort began. Of course, Hubble is a collaboration between the government and industry. And it is industry that actually cuts most of the metal and solders most of the parts together that make the beautiful Hubble Space Telescope. The main industrial partner for the Hubble was Lockheed Martin. And accepting on behalf of our industrial team is Jim Crocker, head of the Civil Space Division at Lockheed. And last, and in no way least, the award for the Goddard Space Flight Project Team. Hubble may be unique in the history of NASA in terms of the size and the breadth of the teams that have worked on it, including teams at virtually every NASA center. But Goddard Space Flight Center has provided the overall leadership and the direction that made Hubble the great success that it is. Accepting on behalf of the Goddard Space Flight Center, center Hubble team is Jennifer Wiseman, the Hubble Senior Project Scientist at Goddard Space Science Center. Without the work of all thousand of you in the audience, and at least a thousand more who couldn't make it here tonight, we would not have the Hubble we have today. This truly was a team effort. You will all be receiving personalized certificates of commendation for your exemplary work. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the evening.
give them all one more round of applause. That's a um, tremendous accomplishment, very inspiring. You know, the Hubble, the Hubble Space Telescope is uh, a story of uh, exploration and understanding our universe, but it is also one which teaches us a lot about perseverance and what humanity can do. I, I always think of that scene in the movie Naked Gun. Do you remember the scene where Leslie Nielsen's in the bar drowning his sorrows? And there's a series of portraits of great disasters. There's the Hindenburg and the Edsel, and right beside it is the Hubble Space Telescope. It was a punchline. And uh, within a few years, what, what a turnaround. What a turnaround. And that didn't happen by magic. That happened because uh, of all of you in this room. And, and others who are not here with us tonight and who are not with us, period. And we want to salute you all for your perseverance as well as your ability to teach us more about the world. Um, it's a tough act to follow. And we have uh, that act being built as we speak. With any luck, Hubble will still be in its prime, in its later 20s, as the James Webb Space Telescope takes its perch in a Lagrange point, what, out of reach of the Hubble repairman and, and human beings for now, but uh, it does have the opportunity to take us farther out and, and thus further back. And uh, we look forward to seeing those images, and wouldn't it be good if they were working together um, somehow? So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, and a round of applause to him, too. That was a little cameo appearance from some of the great it's good to have a Nobel laureate in the house, you know, you never know when you need one, right? Anyway, um, so I wish all of you Godspeed, I wish Hubble Godspeed, and we leave you, as I say goodnight, with a look at what is in store with James Webb. Good night. Space Telescope offered its greatest performance yet, seeking clues to how and when the universe was created. With the Hubble, we made incredible discoveries. But it also told us where our limits were. As the Hubble stared deeper and deeper into space, we began to run out of galaxies. Does that mean the galaxies come to the end? No. We realized what we should really do is build the largest space telescope humanity has ever conceived of. This is the next generation telescope and will show us a universe we have never seen before. The Hubble telescope can only see what you can see with your eye. The James Webb telescope looks at areas that the Hubble could never see. Just the physical size of the mirror is much, much larger. The mirror is so big, we need to slice it into smaller segments so we can fold it up and unfold it on orbit. There's nothing I can say that can come close to describing how technically difficult building this telescope is. Every team is so anxiously looking at their part. Is the membrane shaped right? Is that the right material? Is it going to hold it in place? Will it deploy? Hubble you could go up and fix. This one, it's a make or break. We can't afford a mistake. We have to get this right. The first time, the only time, we have to hit the pitch out of the park, a million miles out of the park. It's within our grasp for the first time in human history to make a discovery that will change the world. This telescope is gonna capture the very first light of the universe. What we can do is fill in when did the first stars and galaxies turn on. We'll be able to peer inside of the very cold clouds of gas and dust where baby stars and planets are being formed. In our own Milky Way galaxy, we have hundreds of billions of stars. Another Earth is undoubtedly out there. The harder question we face right now, is there an Earth nearby? One of the cool things about flying is it makes me think about what other worlds are out there that are like this, that have water and land and maybe civilization. Everyone's sort of trapped in their own head. And I think that we're trying to find life elsewhere because we're lonely. I think that's why we do these things. This is a chance to measure myself against one of the hardest problems man has set himself the goal to do. 
It's the engineering job of a lifetime. We want to see what's at the outer edges of what's possible. And then we push a little farther. It's not just a machine built by engineers and scientists to look out to the universe. It's taking humanity on a journey. I have to believe with all that galaxy up there that someone else is looking up and sees me looking back. Even if we're one in a million, there's billions and billions and billions. Within our generation, we might be able to answer the question, are we alone in the universe? I want to know.